This is Drom Shakasuto. Thanks for watching. Please remember to subscribe and like this video. I once explained in, um, in, in one of my lectures that I think that I know the reason why Hashem chose me for my mission. And it's not something special. Everyone been chosen for his mission. So, but I'm trying to understand on mine. And I explained, I said that when I started my process of tshuva, of coming closer to Hashem, so it was very clear to me when I start experiencing the supervision of Hashem and the private personal supervision, all those things that came together, when I experienced it in the beginning, it was 100% clear to me that it was a divine supervision, that it was someone else, that it wasn't me. I haven't felt spiritual or illuminated or high or like, it wasn't my inner powers that I felt that were getting greater and it, I was broken as yesterday and something happened to me, came into my life and, and, and really start like, helping me from outside, from knocking on my door and, and, and asking me things and telling me things. And I was very honest and I think that that um, part of my character, my ability to live it like that, to remember that it's all divine and it's not me, it's not something that I made or something that I, that I achieved, I think that this is the thing that gives me the power to go and to teach others because I'm not losing the truth while teaching. By having that ability, I'm able to keep on telling people about their true potential and not falling to that imagination like that what that I achieved, it's because that I'm unique or special or whatever, because I achieved huge things until today. And they, you, like we can talk about them in many ways, but still I always see that, that the Creator, He is the one that is making all those things happen. Now, why is it important for me to say it? because I want to discuss that with you that you will understand something new today about your true potential and not about my achievements even though they're great but it's not what I am here to pass what that I'm here to teach is that the Creator planted inside of us a very huge thing and it's an inner connection to him it's something that is not something that we cannot fully understand even what it means because when you connect yourself to infinity you become to be in infinite okay. infinite you, Zev, maybe you will. Want me here? I I don't like if you're good there, okay. so be I there. Just, okay. Whatever. I can move. Yeah. No, you should just feel comfortable. Okay. When a person is connected to a, a millionaire, so then he has this backup of few millions or hundreds of millions when you're connected to a genius so you have access you're being backed up by his wisdom to a certain company to a certain organization so their lawyers their advisors their managers like their staff will back you up you're part of a company of a community of a group they'll catch you if you fall 
But when you're connected to the endless one, to the Creator, to the Almighty, so in that moment, there is no limits to your power. And why am I talking about it? Because the world is so tired. People are so tired already. Like, we don't have the power for the war, for the struggle, for the daily effort. And for us today, and I'm talking about myself, to go and buy a dozen of eggs is, is, is a mission. It's, it's like a bag of milk and loaf of bread. Like it's, you need to go out of the house. It's not like, you don't just take your slippers and go, like your floppies and, and go to the, to the, it's today to open your, your window is a mission. And it's the most easiest windows ever. Like, the world been progressed so fast and, and, and we achieved so many things from side of technology that everyone has their cars and mobiles and like everything is so easy. Like you can find your ways. Like I found my way like to Buffalo and like it's impossible in Manhattan to find your way into Manhattan and out from Manhattan. Like it's, it, you can't do it, cannot, but today it's possible, like a 17 years old that just got his father's car, he's doing it on ways, like he's like, it's easy, it's not a problem. But it's a bigger problem than, than we can imagine because everything becomes so emotional and, and our mind holds so much information. And everything is bugging and, and, and on our shoulders and on our backs. And everyone are suffering from emotional issues. And everyone are scared and everyone are worried and everyone don't know what's going to be. And, 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 and when you need to calculate all of your emotions and all of your thoughts and all of your fears and all of the outcomes from every situation all the time. So like even to buy a bag of milk, it's impossible. Like, how I'm going to show my face, how I'm going to get out, what I'm going to do with my, how, what I'm going to wear, how I'm going to do it, how I'm going to present myself, what I'm going to say, like, and even if there are some individuals that are not experiencing it in the same volume, everyone are experiencing it somewhere. If it's in businesses, in money matters, if it's in on paying your bills, if it's in relationships, in educating your children, things that are basics, things that are like, to buy shoes, my wife, she's suffering from buying shoes. You, it's a, you're gonna think we're crazy. Like if, like I mean, you're gonna know we're crazy if we're gonna tell you what we're going through for those pair of shoes. Like you can't believe it. You can't believe it. And it's like she just. And the truth is that she's just looking for something comfortable, like that she'll be happy with. But her test makes it impossible to find that pair, and. Someone else that doesn't experience it in shoes, like, and, and especially in sneakers, she's not looking for high heels, special occasions. She's looking for comfortable shoes and she can't find them. Why? Because Hashem is testing us on that. Because Hashem is being annoying with us on shoes. And with one, he's being annoying on shoes. And with one, he's being annoying on apartments. And with one, on his tshuva. And in one, on finding his soulmate, his match. And one, on healing to be healthy. And one, to find his happiness. And Hashem is, is making us come to that point that we will walk on the line of despair and it will be so clear what we're choosing. If we're choosing right or wrong if we're going to light or to darkness that we we are walking on the border and that's the test of this generation and on the border it's very heavy it's very stressful now the connection between the pressure the stress that we're experiencing in every moment of our life making cup of tea and don't know what to do with it if to drink it already or to take another thing with it can't choose cookie from your, your from the sh like the house can be full of food and you don't have anything to eat and it's an it's 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 a fantastic situation 
but you're also stuck with no food and the house is packed and you can't sit and eat. You don't have the ability to access to your own food. The person can have loads of money and he can't touch, he cannot afford himself to use his own money. And he has it and he can't touch it. Don't know what to choose, what to wear. And his closet is full with clothing and he cannot choose. And what's the connection between that struggle to the fact that we are connected to the Almighty? That He made our life so impossible that we will, he, we will stand in that place that we must call Him. And you, as much as you are in need, that's how much you're going to call for help. So He pushed us to that corner that we will need Him even to choose a cookie only because He wants us to connect ourselves to Him in every moment of our life. This is the only reason. There is a story on a father, a king, that he was supporting his son, like every normal father, gave him everything. And with the years, he saw that his kid the prince doesn't come to visit him. They're not talking like they used to when he was a child. So, because the, the prince had access to the treasures and he had his private driver and the keys to all the, the pool room and the, 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 the tennis courts, so he didn't need his father. So, what his father did, he closed the faucet. He said no more money to him. Changed the locks and everything. So the prince immediately came to the office, to his father's room. What's going on? He said, look, there are some issues. I'm going to give you, like, I'm going to divide the, like, it's not free access to everything anymore. Now, from now on, I'll give you one million dollar every year and, and, like, you're going to live on that. So. He saw his son coming once a year. He finished his million, probably a few months before the end of the year, and he came to visit his father again. So his father was a wise person, wise king, and told him, listen, from now on it's going to have to be 100,000 every time. I'm sorry, like um, the budget, whatever. And so the kid came once a month, and then he told him, listen, I'm sorry, I have only 10 grand to give you right now, it's going to be intense. And until he brought him to that place, and then the kid asked him, why? Why are you limiting me so much? Like, I had so much fun, like, and I'm suffering, like, everything I need, I need to come and, like, to ask. So he told him, listen, I miss you. I love you. And you're not coming. When you have everything you need, so you're not coming to see my face anymore. And I miss you. To say that to a kid, like, let's be honest, if we're going to hear it, it's not, even though that now we are waking up in a way, oh, I need to talk to Hashem more, oh, I need to call my father, okay, everyone will have that thought, but in reality, if you will ask yourself, if you'll have all your dreams been answered already and you have it all right now, will you keep on calling? If the answer is no, so you should appreciate your weaknesses, your lackings, your poverty. But if you are working on yourself to achieve that level of solid faith, that you're always talking, that you're always remembering Him, so then you can claim and demand to have the access to all the bounty to all the treasures, because you can testify in yourself that you won't back off because of the wealth, that the prosperity will not destroy your faith and will kick you back to a place of a person that does not have appreciation and gratitude. So we are all waiting and hoping for a complete redemption, for a complete salvation. But what did we miss? yet is the complete faith 
Now, I'm working on that thing all the time, all the time. I spoke a few days ago with a friend of mine and he asked me something and I gave him an advice and then he smiled and I asked him, why are you smiling? And I thought that he was smiling because of one thing, but then he said, because I'm not thinking about Hashem all of the time like you, like you expect me to. Like, because from my point of view, every moment is a challenge with Hashem. But for another person, like when he's hungry, so there's food. But really there's no food. Food is the challenge if you're going to remember the Creator or that you will be stuck in the food. Relationship. It's not about your wife or your husband or your argument. It's about Hashem that is talking through both of you, not only through her to you, not only through you to her. It's a discussion that is taking place in heaven and being expressed right now on earth. And the power of speech of ours is expressing the spirit of Hashem. Our eyes receiving the power of vision from the noble eye of the Creator. We don't have the ability to see. Only He is the one that opens our eyes to see. He's giving that eyesight to the blind. He gives us the power to see. The power to talk, the power of speech, the power to feel, to think. All of our emotions and senses, all of those things are divine things that found the place to be expressed in physicality and it's our bodies and our emotional bodies but in reality the root and the beginning of our being is divine and when we understand that we are a keyboard that we are a way we are a channel to channel bounty to this world wisdom and all beautiful things that are divine, that are coming from that endless source of heaven, when we understand that, our ability and access to the treasures to deliver them, to bring them down to earth, is getting much stronger. If it's through music, if it's through cooking, if it's through singing, if it's through talking, simple conversations. When my wife, she made a video, she explained how she made chalot, how she makes chalot for Shabbat. And when she was kneading, we learned it for the video, kneading the dough, so she said you should show the dough that you love him, that you love it. And that like, whoa. <laughs> for me, but for her it's simple, because she really loves him. She really love it. She really give her heart to the chalot that she's making. Everything. And like a husband can lose his mind. Like if like his wife, she fell in love with the chalot. Like what's that? What's going on? In reality, you're finding yourself with a woman that she can spend four, five and six hours thinking and planning and, and making preparations for the for the ceremony of the chalot, and like for you, like, can I eat it before Shabbat, or what's going on? Well, like, what's the plan with the chalot? <laughs> but you don't understand, you don't understand how much heart she's putting into that, those chalot, and that what it makes those chalot to be so powerful in the end, and not only tasty. Also to give a different energy to the ones that are eating, a certain impression into their souls. Certain sparks will be revealed and uncovered by that love that is breaking through, through physicality, through the chalot, through the flour and the water and whatever you're going to put in it. And when you put it into the, into the oven, it, it will be different when you're putting it with love, with heart, with intention. Or if you just like, let's finish with it, it's something else. And it's in chalot. And it's in going for shoppings. I spoke about this topic maybe three, four years ago, that I'm going with my wife to shoppings. And shopping cucumbers, I'm talking about vegetables, not shoppings, she never buys anything. Talking about simple things, to so going to buy vegetables, shirts for the kids. and. This woman can find herself in front of 
of, of the options. And from a pile of 10 shirts in the exact same color and also the same size, she will pick the seventh one of that pile and she will sense, she will feel the, the fabric of all of them and they're all the same, like for me, like I'm ignorant, right? Yes, no problem, no argue, uh, arguing on that. But you have a pile of 10 shirts that are all the same, all white, all clean, all in the same size, and she will sense something different in that one that she will take. And she will pull the third one or the seventh one, and you're standing from the side and like, we're late. What's going on? Why? Like, we found it. Everything is perfect. You don't appreciate your wife. You don't, you're not aware to her sensitivity to those things. And because that you don't appreciate her, you don't give your heart, your mind, to what that she cares about, you are making her feel not comfortable with who she is. And then you make her doubt herself. Like she's saying to herself, I'm wasting my husband's time. And then she will start thinking to herself that she's doing something wrong. Like, I don't know how to choose. I can't choose. Something is wrong with me. But it's not true. You are able to sense and to feel certain layers in the depths of the other fabri fabrics of clothing or to choose that apple or that cucumber or that tomato from hundreds of them and you know why. Because there's something in it that makes it yours and you can feel it. And someone else cannot feel it. But if you feel it and not going to go with it, so then you messed up. If you feel it and you know it that this is yours and that's not, so you messed up. You violated the, the, the covenant with your Creator because He sent you on a mission with set of senses and powers to sense to feel and you are ignoring them because of your low self-esteem. So if you are destroying your own self-esteem or destroying self-esteem of others, anyway you need to work on yourself to allow yourself to believe in yourself and to allow other people to be themselves because that is their mission. That's the only thing they need to do. And for you, it's a waste of time. But the truth is that someone else will look at you sitting and learning Torah and going to tell you the same. You're wasting your time learning Torah. How can you pray for one hour? What are you doing? One hour you're praying. What are you going to the mikveh? Why are you going to shul? Why it's so important for you to walk for Rosh Hashanah? You want to go to the Cat Kills Mountains? Are you crazy? And no one will understand you. But you want him to at least accept you for being who you are. Like, no, but listen, I have something over there. There is something that I, that I miss. I feel that it will complete me. I feel that it will give me something. So I need to be who I am. So just let me be. Respect me for being who I am because that's how I've been created. We cannot demand it from others before we're letting others to be themselves. That's first of the, of, of, First of all, so the true potential of ours will be revealed when we will let ourselves be who we are. And then suddenly such light will come from within, like in such powerful endless spring that will just flow and expand and wash the world. Mm -hmm. And not because that we will understand how powerful we are, because the wave of honesty and, and positivity that will come out from us very fast will hit other people and will affect them the same. And then in short period of time, we can make such huge change in the world that will make redemption take place, make it possible. 
Because for now, when we look at reality, like governments are fighting with each other. Like there are such systems in the world that are working against our faith, against our project without even thinking about us, without even knowing who we are. Such huge systems that are working only to produce money and, and, and labor and effort and, and systematic ways for people to, to, to disappear and to lose themselves into the systems that everyone will go in patterns, that everyone will lose their individuality. Such huge systems that are working like that, school systems and, and work systems, that like, whoa, how are we going to confront all those powerful people, societies? Like, it looks impossible. But only because we don't understand that it's all a plan and we are holding close to, to the switch, to the, to, the, to the power source. When our light will go out to the world, it will be different than all other kinds of light, all other kinds of power that have been influenced to the world until now. Why? Because once there was communism, and before of it there was like there was different hierarchies, different ways of, of, of governments and and it's changing socialism and, and Demo democrats and like ev like every hundred years or every one thousand like it's changing with the generation. But basically it was all the same. Why? Because it was always based on lack of faith, on lack of truth, on lack of honesty. It was always a scam. Always there was a group or one group of people that were powerful and strong and wanted more control and more power and that was the reason why they were doing it. But we are coming from the other side. We're coming from that place that we really want to set everyone free and not just to claim it to receive the crown, just because that we don't care about the crown. We truly do want Hashem to be the king and that the world will enjoy the real potential of it. Like that yesterday we went to the, to the, to the falls, to the Niagara Falls, and we, we saw all that power of water. And like I was so inspired, like felt the, the energy of nature and, 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 and power of creation. And my wife, she told me, you know, it's scary. It's too strong. It needs to be channeled somehow. It's like, it's too powerful. And this is something very deep. Because the will of Hashem is that His light not going to wash the world and all kinds of, of, of high concepts that doesn't have a vessel. Hashem wants His light to take place in your life, and in your life, and in your life. Hashem wants the light to be channeled that you will experience the blessing when the redemption will take place it's not that suddenly we're going to see birds in all colors flying all around and we're going to see pink clouds it's not going to be like sparks and sparklings all over the floor it's it's we're not talking about a cartoon fantasy redemption we're talking about all nature under the rule of nature, functioning with one purpose, to do good. So if you need the help of one of the animals, that animal will supply your need, will help you. If you will, for your spirit, will need to hear the sound of certain bird, that bird will appear in front of your window exactly when you'll open the window in that precise hour. Everything will work under the supervision of the Creator to reveal His perfection, His completion, the unity of all particles of creation as one, that they are one. Today it's chaos. Why? Because we are separated from each other. Because everyone are so scared and so divided and everyone are worried and protecting their own life source so they're not 
opening life to to how you say that collaborate not collaborate collaborate yeah collaboration to to collaboration yeah, to, yeah or to collaborate to collaborate that's what they said yeah I'm teaching also english can be collaboration it also can be collaboration depends on the celebration. it depends on the celebration exactly yeah you have when we will drop our fear from people our fear from society fear from people's opinions in that moment we will set ourselves free and we will become true sparrows real sparrows we will be able to walk tall and proud of yourself and just be who you are and give the power to your friends to your, all your surroundings to be themselves without forcing them to be like you or to agree with you or to follow you or to listen to you you will just feel comfortable to be who you are with them and they will feel as a result of that comfortable to be themselves with you and everything will just be okay and when things will be just okay that's that's a secret of redemption we don't need more than that we don't need more than okay from heaven we just need things to be okay that everything will be good that everything will be calm and quiet now for those wonders to take place for that what that is needed is first of all role models for those ones that are surrounding us and if you have someone that you are learning from him so you can share that with your friends but if you don't have that one or that your friends cannot listen to him from any reason so you need to be that one because that light must be delivered and you must go like let's say that you heard that class right now and you say okay you know what i want to pass that message around but my friends won't sit and watch one hour class on youtube or on facebook at least not right now so you just now became that messenger to express your deep understanding and what's the the most wonderful thing in it that your understanding might be even deeper than mine because your understanding is not based on my understanding i'm not passing an information i am in a way just touching those keys arousing the power of your imagination to understand things that you already thought that you already felt i'm talking about you with you i'm not talking about i'm talking about me with myself but with you i'm talking about you and you're hearing things about yourselves not about me i can talk about myself for hours except of my wife's migraine nothing going to happen but for you you're hearing my speeches talking about yourselves and when you will go and just express your own feeling about what did you realized about yourselves people will come to conclusions about themselves and not about you at all they will remember you oh they'll have gratitude to you oh i remember oh thank you i appreciate you know in that day but what that you will wake up inside of them is the access to their ancient archives to their inner connection to the almighty to their spiritual aspect of life to their inner bonding to endless to infinity and this is the power of honesty this is the power of love this is the power of caring of sensitivity of all good attributes that they allow us to be who we are for that the torah has been given to us that we will understand that there are rules that there are guiding lines that is protecting us from our neighbors 
that are guiding us to walk and search for the truth, for the divine truth, to understand that there is a creator, that we're on a mission. But that's where it's finished. And when it's finished, you need to let the flame of your soul. When the rules are finishing in 613 obliga written obligation, then it's the time for all the real wise people to explain the way to keep and to be observant. Because only to tell a person you should do A, B, C, D, E, it's not something that can work. Because if his partner to life starts screaming at him, he loses the connection with what that you commanded him to do. If you're trying to teach a person that starts his learning process in age of three, and you're trying to teach another person that starts his learning process in age 60 or 70 or 20 or 30, or even just in a different language, different piece of land, different country, you're talking in different languages, you're talking different realities. The wisdom that you should start with is different. You should start in a different place, discuss different topics, explain different issues, touching different points, putting the mark uh, on, on different things. Why? Because that person is disconnected from what that is bothering you, and he's bothered and, and, and inspired also from different things. And you must help him to find his own connection. One is waking up because he saw a fantastic Shabbos meal in some family's house that they invited him. Someone else from a trip to the Far East. Like, what's the connection? And one for years and generations, his grandparents were teaching them how to learn and how to keep halakha in a way. Like, fantastic. And another person in the age of 40, a car accident brought him back to life. What's the connection between them? Only the purpose of life, only the bottom line, the conclusion of their life mission, that it's the same, that there is only one truth. There is a Creator and we're all in the same mission. Not to be the same, to get to that point of truth from our destination, from our locations, from our places. And it's like the sun that is spreading uh, its um, beams of light to 660, 360 degrees and everyone is hitting a different place in, in the world and there's endless beams of light and we are those beams of light and we're not in charge on illuminating the world we're in charge on illuminating our share that our soul will shine in our place and when your soul will shine in its place, also your surroundings will enjoy that light. And those flowers will be opened as well. And when one will touch the next, they will all open their eyes and their hearts to wake up and to understand that they should just express the godliness that's been treasured inside of them in the secret of their creation. The one that made you, made you exactly like you are. And that's why we cannot be judgmental on ourselves. Because immediately when we are being judgmental on ourselves, we are being judgmental on the Creator. It means that we misinterpret the greatness of His creation. We just like don't get it. If you think that you were supposed to be different, or if you think that you should be different, or if you think that you should change... Those are not possible things. You are who you are. And I'm not talking about your character, about your habits, about your patterns, about your way of thinking. I'm talking about your, 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 the nature of your creation, who you are. You cannot judge yourself on the color of your eyes or on your accent or on your way of thinking. You can just understand it now. You feel you need to improve in certain things. Work on yourself. You're elastic. There are things that can be changed. But not to the foundation of who you are. With that you cannot argue. 
This is the only thing that Hashem made in the world that cannot be changed, is who we are. And always to think that we should imitate someone else and that we should try to be like someone else and that we are not enough, that's the opposite direction from the truth. The truth is that you have been created in His shape and in His figure and that He decided exactly how to design you and how to make you and how to send you to this world and what will be your mission. And if you think that your mission is not important, it's only because that you cannot understand the importance of your mission. We talked in our house, we're talking about that issue a lot, um, on not e eating meat. We're talking about it because it's crazy. That, like, we are eating meat still. Probably going to stop very soon. Talking about it makes it the process faster but but like to think to yourself that some animal should stop its life because that you're hungry doesn't sound good and without describing all the the horror and 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 pain that that it just like i don't want to have a share in like like that you don't want to have the share in, in, in killing innocent animals. You don't want to have the share of, of all the process. Like it, it got its beginning. It has its, its beginning. Like you, you rather not to think about it maybe when the chicken is so delicious. But, but it's, it's a bird that wants to, to live its life. Like it doesn't want to be eaten. Now, when we spoke about it, so I mentioned to... My, one of my kids that there uh, there is a certain religion I don't remember um, maybe maybe it's something uh, that is known for all but I don't remember in the Far East and and those people are commanded in their religion not to kill at all and you know Buddhism Buddhism, sure. Buddhism. And they're, and maybe, I don't know, I don't remember. And they're commanded not to kill. And before they're building their, um, their uh, temples, for years they have people, volunteers, that are digging the worms out of the ground, not to kill even the worms while putting the foundations of their buildings. So now, my son looked at me, Nachman, and he said, Father, they're right. When I'm going to build my house, I'm not... <laughs> okay, so now that's a, that's a thought of a kid. But like, what you're going to do with that thought, that if really you're going to think about it, like why that worm shouldn't have its own house because you want to live there? Like, who are you? Who are you? Why do you think that you're more important than a worm? Hashem, when He sent Adam and Eve to, 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 to run the garden, to control the animals, he, they were not commanded to kill. They were forbidden to kill. They were not allowed to kill. Only after the flood, the Creator saw that human beings are not able not to kill. They won't listen, even if I'll tell them not to kill. So at least He gave us the way to, to, for ritual slaughter to kill the animal in a way that it will feel less pain and will less damage its spirit and, and, and the life will, will, will continue somehow, at least in a way. It was, it was a default. It was after the fact. It's not the ideal way. The ideal way will be after redemption that all animals will live together, that all creations will live together. We won't eat meat. We won't eat animals. So... When, when I spoke to my son about it and I told him about that, that group of that religion, so he was like, he, and then it hit me that they're right. And that we should work on ourselves to work on our sensitivity in all possible way, in ways, in all, in, 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 in every aspect of our life. Every time that you meet yourself that you're acting 
in a selfish way, that you're running over people, that you're crushing people, that you're crushing, destroying animals, that, you're, like, that you are a burden on society, on the world, in that moment you should, you should face yourself and ask yourself, okay, what am I doing here? What's the mission of my life? Is that the mission of my life? So, I believe and I see that our potential is, is very great, very big, very large, very strong, and very powerful. And I also see huge results um, corresponding to our effort on spreading the faith, the emuna, in the world. And we can see fruits. Like if we have friends in Buffalo, so for sure that we see results because we started our journey in Israel, in Beth Israel. So from that place to have friends in Buffalo, New York, it means something. And um, we we'll keep on spreading the light and you should keep on doing it as well. And Hashem will listen to all of our prayers and to all of our holy desires and will make all of our dreams come true. And we should not give up on our dreams that all animals will have their shelters and that no one will suffer and that all human beings will be friends with each other. If people will refuse to, for, to that light, they will find themselves in darkness. It's not that something wrong or bad will happen. They will cause the separation for themselves. If there are going to be communities, groups, people that will decide to divide themselves from good, they will find themselves in a bad place. But we should just focus on spreading good, spreading emuna, spreading faith between everyone. Just teaching faith, teaching. Faith starts, faith in yourself. Believe in yourself. Because you are already divine. When you will know yourself, you'll know Hashem. And you cannot know the Creator as long as you don't know yourself. You can, like, Hashem is not an allegory. Hashem is not a, a tale. It's not a story. Oh, no, the Creator, He created six days. No, it's not, a, it's not an allegory. It's not a tale. Hashem is life itself. Hashem, He is the creation. He is the life spirit in the leaves, in the grass, in the, in the animals that are hiding now. He is hiding in the animals now. He is hiding now. He is the rain. He is watering earth. He is the life inside of you. He is your passion. He is your desires. And when you're scared, He is your fear. He is everything and there is nothing except of Him. And we just need to understand what does He want from us. Where is it taking us? To where? And if we will just be aware to our true selves, to our good spirit, to our soul, we're going to understand so much, so much. Ten minutes of simple meditation, self-awareness. Ten minutes of it, but do it. Something to work on finding your soul, carving your, 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 your core. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And all. We hope you enjoyed this video very much. Please now remember to subscribe and like this video and share it with your friends to help spread faith in the world. For more, please visit amuna.com. May your light shine always and your requests should be answered with the greatest blessings. Amen.